How's it going everyone? I just want to make a little video for you guys. Um, usually after I post a video, a knife video, I give it about a, a week or so and see what kind of comments may come up or questions and I'd like to answer those in a video for you guys. So uh, this is the latest video that I uploaded. It's a cleaver and it's made from uh, 1075 high carbon steel and it has paper micarta bolster and uh, brown maple burl I think they're brown maple, yeah, brown maple burl handles which are from uh, Bexerco Blades, I buy those on Instagram and this one I bought from knifekids.com the handles are secured with decorative pins, they're 732nd inch and I used West Systems glue to secure them also, it comes with uh, black, black and red uh, G10 spacers. So it's a pretty big cleaver. If you want to do some heavy chopping, you go all the way back. If you want to do some light chopping, and I think it's balanced. Let's see, right there. Alright, uh, it comes with a sheath which has this kind of like leather pattern. It's a uh, hold sticks and I got it from uh, knifekids.com. You could go there and uh, find out any type of uh, kydex or hold sticks, any pattern that you want. Uh, the, one of the questions that comes up is will this rust? Yes, this is high carbon so it will rust. Um, if it's non, high, well, the question is how do you keep it from rusting? I usually give my uh, clients 2000 grit sandpaper so if the rust develops you know you could just sand it off. If it's if the knife is going to be used for uh, uh, for not food purposes then I usually put some oil on it. Now Jim Skelton hates anybody who puts oil on it and he recommends using this one EDCI formula so just google it you'll find out and he says just spray it on rub it off with with a clean cloth and you're good to go from uh, Mr. Barnhart's cleaver video I got a lot of upset people because I didn't use pins and I used screws instead of pins so hopefully uh, oh and also for some people the, the taste of the wood that I used it, it didn't match their taste so Hopefully this this handle matches your taste. There was a comment saying, "Hey, I thought you said you're gonna post the Expendables Legionnaire knife. Instead, you post a cleaver video. I want to see the Legionnaire's knife." Well, here here's what happened. I had about 15 knives that I worked on, and they're all CPM 154. So I had I had to ship them out for heat treat, and because uh, I can't do that at home, it's a complex process for me and it took about eh, 15 days or so no maybe less for the whole process so meanwhile I decided to uh, make a cleaver video so hopefully you guys didn't get bummed out because I didn't post uh, this knife video out of those knives I'm keeping one of them for myself and that knife is gonna replace my old cheap Walmart brand that gets dull so fast and the other one was Kiridashi. I finished it and it got shipped out to a customer. There was a comment on this cleaver video. Loved your uh, video, everything was excellent. There was something missing. Oh right, it's a, vi it's a music. How come you don't uh, put music on your videos anymore? Well, I'm a member with audioblocks.com and I've been using them for over two years and over those two years I had nothing but headache and I'll, I'll explain why. So when you become a member you pay $99 a year and now it went up to $150 a year or $149, $150 bucks even. And when, when you buy the membership you get access to any music you want on that website. So I would go pick 
sit for hours picking out what music I want to download it, right? So then you edit the video, you put the music in a video. You go to post it on YouTube, a couple of seconds later or a minute or a day later, two days later, you get a copyright notice saying that, hey, you use somebody else's music, it's not your music. So then you gotta go to audioblocks.com, you gotta submit the, the link to your video saying, hey, can you remove the copyright notice? I'm a member with you guys. So they say, okay, it'll take 48 to 72 hours. Meanwhile, you're not getting paid because uh, the video that you submitted, that you worked really, really hard and you, you worked really hard on the knife that you made and you published it, you're not getting paid because you use somebody else's music in your video. Now they're getting paid. You see how that works? So while it's getting resolved, it takes time. So I guess, yes, you get uh, reimbursed of all the profits that you miss, but then time goes by again. And I, I usually what, upload two to three part videos. So time goes by and another uh, composer that you use their music, they put a copyright notice on your video saying that hey you use my music in your video it doesn't belong to you so then you gotta go to audio blocks again submit it and it gets to a point that you've submitted so many times per that video that audio block says hey you need to uh, deal with that with deal with that issue with uh, YouTube so now you gotta go to YouTube submit the copyright request um, and it's a process and you're got to explain that I'm a member with them, I pay this much in my membership, um, the music was used with proper uh, authorization, can you remove the copyright issue? If you need the receipts of the my membership, I have them, thank you very much. So time goes by, they remove it. A couple of days goes by, another video gets hit. And I'm going to put a little video for you to show you in my email how many copyright notices I get. And I've deleted a lot of them. And then it just got to a point where I said, hey, if, if somebody mentions in my video that why, why I don't use the music in my videos, I'll save this just to show you guys that the, the headache that I go through with the copyright issues. Now... I'll probably look into I just don't have time right now but I'll try to find maybe another website that provides um, music where I will not have this kind of headache issue with the music copyright issues but as of right now I'm just gonna post videos without music and it's just peace of mind uh, Mr. Barnhart's Cleaver I didn't expect it it's already well I think it's 1.8 million views and imagine if I used music on that video and how many copyright notices I would get but anyway I'm glad I didn't but here's a bright side we all have different tastes in music so when you get home turn on your favorite music in the background turn on my video and enjoy the video I think it's a win-win situation there was a question what knife do I use uh, to cut out the stencil this is a Kershaw and the model is 1600. As you could see I'm still uh, battling with the grinding of the bevels well on this particular cleaver and I get a question a lot of times I get a question what is the angle that you set up your uh, bevel jig you know the file jig to uh, to grind a bevel what is the perfect angle and there is no perfect angle it will depend on your thickness of the steel that you use and it will depend on the on the width of your uh, bevel so right here you could see the bevel is short right here it's a little bit longer the angle will change from here to here so if you could see it you have a short bevel and it, and it grows and then it gets smaller and it grows again so when you look at it this side your angle is gonna go from this when you get to this part 
your angle of the file is gonna go like this when you get to this part it's gonna go from this it's gonna go back to this and then here it's gonna go different angle so there is no perfect angle to file what I usually do is let's take this this knife for example I leave the edge about one millimeter you know scribe two lines one millimeter apart that's your center you don't want to go past that then you have a bevel line the top line and whatever that angle is you gotta match this line to this line all the way across so there is no specific angle that you grind there is a question why do I put holes in my tang well these two are going to be for decorative pins oh. these two are going to be for decorative pins these three are going to be corby bolts the rest is just to make the, the handle lighter and it gives glue more room to attach it, itself to each other so that's it pretty much it it gives a lighter handle because once you add uh, wood material or whatever material here this part is going to become heavy so you kind of want to balance it out why don't I make my own leather sheath why use cheap plastic well I don't have any room to uh, make leather you know you need workspace and I don't have any workspace right now plus it's it's kind of I want to have a clean environment where I work with leather and I don't have any of that so once I have a bigger place I'll I would love to get into leather making question was how come I don't chop stuff at the end of the video well once I'm done it's in a prestige finish or a nice finish and if you start chopping and everything then you put scratches on it and I, I, I like to finish my knives and send them out to the customer so I did that with the uh, what is that Tanto Kukri after I finished it I went outside and started chopping everything and <laughs> I had to go back and hand sand it and clean it up eh, I don't want to do that I get questions all the time what is this where do you get it so these are diamond wheels uh, not this one but I get this one from Harbor Freight and this is uh, based in US USA these I got at Amazon so why do I use them because I don't have a, a belt grinder that will have an attachment to fit the less than two inch this is a two inch diameter this is less so I, I I I don't have anything to grind with a belt grinder I want to save time so what I do is uh, I'll use a file right to shape it and once I'm done I I'm not really good at filing so sometimes it'll be like this sometimes like this right the angle it's not going to be perfectly low. I'll get really close, but it's not, not going to be perfect 90 degree to the, the, the hand handle part. So what I do, I usually uh, put this on and just grind it until I get a perfect 90 degree from this part to this part. And that's basically why I use them. If I had a, a belt grinder with a one inch attachment belt, then I would, you know, with one inch uh, diameter, then I would, I would stop using them. But right now, I only have a two inch that I use the most, and for this one, I'll use the, I think it's a four inch wheel on the bottom of my grinder. I'll, I'll use it for this part right here, and I'll use a two inch. Uh, maybe I'll use a four inch and four inch and a two inch basically when you guys design your knives um, design to the tools that you have this way it will make your job easier I mean once I have a 
real professional grinder then I'll, I'll I might redesign this model you know make it a little bit different but as of right now I'm just gonna stick with what I have so I could get these out as fast as I can okay there was a question how do you use your drill press where when you drill the the, the drill bits don't catch and make a helicopter spin uh, basically first thing you gotta have uh, uh, sharp drill bits and don't just jam the drill into the steel he'll catch I've caught mine too so just go easy you know you'll feel it just light pressure let it drill itself and you'll be fine now if it's a bigger drill then I'll I'll put like a stop pin or something where it could the 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 knife can rest, you know, and not not spin. But other than that, just just go easy. <sighs> I want to sleep. I'm working nights all this week, so. I gotta go get. I gotta go get him. Stencils. There was a question. How do I get my stencils? Well, what's the process? This is uh, based in the United States. I had my brother draw up. Well, basically, I gave my brother a sketch of what what I wanted my stencil to look like, and he drew it up on uh, Adobe Illustrator, and he exported it in a PNG file. Then. I shipped out the PNG file in an email to TUS Technologies or Technology and I told them the dimensions of the stencils I want to be. After that they send you a, a little email with the attachment and then you print it out and basically you'll see the size of your stencil, how it will look. And if you don't like it, you, you write back to hey, can you make it a little smaller or bigger or whatever. Once you approve it, they'll, they'll uh, print them out. I don't know how they do them, but they'll print them out and ship them to you. And these three stencils, I got, I got one of the pieces off already. But you'll have whatever you order, it'll come in one, two, three, four, five. So for this stuff right here, I paid $107. And these you could use like a thousand times or more. So they're reusable. Just, just keep, keep them clean. Don't fold them. Once, once you fold it and put a crack in it, that becomes an open space where the etching will eat out. So keep them nice and flat and straight when you wipe them you know, to clean and you'll be fine. And then I just keep them in separate baggies of different sizes, different logos because let's say uh, this is 316 thick but this one is only 0.20 see the difference in thickness? I don't know if you can on the video, but this one is smaller than this one, so you can't use the stencil that goes on this one for this one because they won't fit. This one will, you know, it'll it'll go past its uh, boundaries, so you gotta use a smaller uh, stencil for something thinner because it won't look good. And if you use a a small stencil on a big thick steel, it won't look good either. So I try to keep them separated, and that's how I do it. I want to talk about hand sanding and uh, heat treating a little bit. So I just want to show you guys or talk about a process that I do. The question was why do you hand sand before heat treat? Before heat treat your steel is in an annealed state where it's soft and you could shape it, do whatever you want with files. Hand sanding is much much easier at that stage than after the heat treat. After the heat treat it's pretty much you're left to a belt grinder so if you're good at belt grinding then uh, you'll be fine but if not then you gotta make it almost perfect 
prior to heat treat. So what I do, once I shape everything on the, on the knife how I want it, all the bevels, I'll hand sand it. And if you want to watch a good video on hand sanding, Nick Wheeler, I, I think it's Sanding 101, he shows you the proper steps to hand sand. So I'll hand sand it 220, 320, 400, 600 grit everywhere, right? Except the handle, because I'll use the belt grinder to, to shape my handle so it'll mess up the, uh, the finish. But on the handle part, I'll go only 220. I won't go 600 or anything because I want to leave this part as rough as possible, flat, but rough as possible so the glue sticks to it. Here, I'll go to 600 grit, like this one is uh, CPM 154. I ship it out to the heat treating company. This is what it came back. This is the finish. Nice and clean. All I gotta do is hit it with 60 grit, I mean uh, 600 grit and go up with, with the grits, but it's a, it's a finished product. So if I'm doing a, a high carbon steel, same thing, I'll go up to 600 grit, I'll heat treat it. Now, depending on, on steel you use, you'll have scales. So I'll use the, I'll re reuse old sandpaper that I used to uh, hand sand it prior to heat treat to remove the scales. Then I'll go with the uh, new, new fresh um, grits, you know, new sandpaper, and I'll go 220, 320, 400, 600. Then I'll I'll uh, shape my handles, you know, drill them everything to the to the knife. Take them off, you know, do do all the prepping because once this part is glued in the front, let me show you. Ah, too much to take off. Once once this part is glued in the front, you can't hand sand or buff this because you're gonna put scratches on 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 the knife itself. So I'll prep my handles. Then I'll go, depending on, on how, how high of the uh, hand sanding grits I want to go up. But for, let's say for the cleaver, once I shape my handle, got this, this part of the uh, focus. Once I got the front part of the handle buffed out and everything, then I went 800 grit, 1200. 1500 I want 2000 on on the bevel I put my logo buffed it out and when I etch my logos I like to use the etching and not marking mark it all it does is put a mark on it the black mark when you etch you you dig inside the steel and why I use I why I like to use the etching part versus the marking part is because if let's say after you glued the handles and a little bit of glue got on somewhere or you missed it somehow and you have to go back and uh, hand sand it once you hit the, the, the if you mark your logo you you'll, when you hand sand you you'll wipe it out you'll uh, sand it out whereas if you etch it it goes into the steel and you could just hand sand above and your mark is still there but that's that's the biggest reason why I use uh, mark, uh, etching instead of marking. But yeah, so I'll go to 1500 grit, I'll mark it, I'll buff out the, because when you uh, mark, I mean, when you etch it, it leaves uh, whatever that steel that got et uh, etched out. So I, I'll buff it out to clean it out, then I'll hand sand it again. Once it's ready, I'll glue the handles and I'll, I'll, I'll have it sitting like this so the glue drips down, not onto the blade. And I like to tape everything up. I mean, put a lot of newspapers or something. Tape it from here up. And then I'll leave about this much open. Then I'll put a second layer of tape. So once it's glued, I'll start wiping it with the um, cotton knobs or whatever they're called. And then I'll take this part of tape off where it leaves this portion still closed or taped up. 
and I'll so that's my my these are my steps of course after you know it's all glued up 24 48 hours later I'll, I'll have this all covered up again completely and I'll start uh, shaping the handle and I'll hand sand uh, after the file I'll go with 220 or 320 400 600 800 uh, 1200 on the handles and I'll, on the pins I'll go uh, so 1200 then I'll go uh, 2000 so I could buff them and they'll look nice and that's pretty much it that's that's my step how I or all the steps that I go through when I make a knife there was a question uh, how much did I sell this cleaver for if you guys want me to make a video separately um, how much each knife got sold for or what I got for it starting from very very beginning and which knives I kept just just write maybe a couple of comments below so if, if I see that a lot of people would like to see that video I'll, I'll make a separate video alright there was a comment I'm currently trying to make a knife but people said it's weird that I want to make one what's so weird about it okay when I first made hold on a sec. when I made my first knife, a lot of people were making fun of me. Oh, you're a knife maker, huh? Oh, if anybody needs a knife, go talk to Slavic, huh? Why don't you make a knife for me? Oh, why don't you do this? Oh, they'll find a piece of uh, steel laying around or a piece of aluminum. Oh, give this to Slavic. Yeah, he'll make a knife. You can't make knives out of aluminum. But anyway, I start. I, I kept going. You know, people are. Some people are making fun of me for making videos. Uh, they're saying a lot of bad stuff. Hey, you need to quit making knives and start making adult videos instead of knives. You'll get more money out of it. You know what? As time went by, and my skills got better. Some of those people want my knives now. And hopefully, you know what, just go make your knives. Don't talk to those people. Just do your thing and your skills will grow, but you know, you'll get better. And eventually, they'll see that all this making fun of you got them nowhere. But you, you succeeded. So, right now... I'm looked upon, whereas before I was making made fun of, you know. So just don't let it, don't let that stuff get you down. All right. There are comments on my YouTube channel where people place their emails. They're like, "Hey, contact me. I want a knife from you. Here's my email." Uh, guys, don't do that. Or girls, don't do that. Uh, unless you want to get spammed. Uh, basically, you're opening up your email to everybody watching my video so if you want to contact me uh, direct message me on Instagram and I'll do my best to reply back to you now I stopped replying on Google Plus I do not reply on Twitter uh, I don't have Facebook the only place I reply to people is Instagram and it's mostly due be to because I don't have enough time in my day to upload and reply on all different social media platforms hopefully that oh and, and I also reply on, on YouTube but if you want like direct questions or the cost or hey, I want to get a knife from you or some then uh, Instagram that's the best place to get an answer from me there was a comment a cleaver as fine deserves a clever name and it was by Joshua Pohl Thank you, Joshua, for the comment. Uh, yes, I would like to thank Don Allen for coming up with a name for this cleaver because this is one of my hardest parts of knife making is giving names to all my knives or cleavers. And when he said it looks like Stingray, I mean, yes, it does. Thank you, Don. Appreciate it. You saved me a lot of headache. And the last comment, it was written by Dylan. Wow, absolutely beautiful. 
and inspires me to make my work even better. Keep up the great work. Dylan, that's exactly what I do. I, I follow people on Instagram that are the knife makers that are just way, way better than I. Um, when I look at their work, it too inspires me to uh, increase my level of skill and to do better. So hopefully I answered all of your questions that came up on uh, this cleaver video. Take care guys and I will try to do my best to get this knife video out next. So I got a few challenges with it but hopefully everything will be resolved and I'll post this video. Hopefully, hopefully next video. Take care. And go make some knives. And don't let anybody get you down. Bye. I usually go for him. I'll go over this plate.